Hi, I'm John Landells for Xenos, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the power of our service impact module to help reduce outages in your environment. You're going to learn how easy it can be to define a service, and how once a service has been defined, it'll remain dynamically up to date as things in the underlying infrastructure change. Let's get started. What we're seeing here is my Xenos dashboard. We can have multiple dashboards here, we can configure them, we can drag and drop things around. Uh, but what I want to focus on today are two things. First of all, if you look across to the right hand side of the screen here, we have a list of events. Now, in our view, events really give you hindsight. They show you what has already gone wrong. And there's a big list of them here that I have to potentially go through and fix. But the challenge is, with any one of these events, without me having a deep, intimate knowledge of my environment, I can't tell you from looking at an event whether something is causing any real business impact. I don't know, is it a production server? Is it a QA server? Um, is it something that's actually in a maintenance window? I can't tell that just by looking at an event. So at Xenos, what we want to do is we want to give you foresight rather than hindsight, and help you to understand things from a business service perspective. So what exactly is a service in Xenos terms? Well, take an example of Microsoft Exchange. If you want to deliver email in your organization using Exchange, you're going to need an Exchange server. That much is a given. But it doesn't matter how well-tuned that Exchange server is, how well-configured, how powerful that box is. It's not going to work without a domain controller. It's where all of the details are stored in a Microsoft environment. Now, you're probably also using some sort of external storage for this, so you'll need that to be available. You're also going to need network services like DNS and DHCP in order for your users to be able to actually receive their email. And of course, none of this is going to work without a network. So all of these things together is what we would consider our exchange service. And every component within that service has to be healthy in order for the main component to be healthy. Let's take an example. Let's say we've got a terabyte of storage allocated um, for Microsoft Exchange. In normal usage, you know, we're not using very much of the disk. Um, we've got plenty of space there for expansion. We can probably say that the availability of this service is acceptable. But what happens if we get up to 90% full on that storage? We know as IT guys that as we're passing that 90% threshold, there's a problem coming our way. But we've still got 100 gig available, so we can probably still send and receive emails right now without anybody noticing. So under these circumstances, we would probably show this service as at risk. That's telling us everything's fine now, no panic, but you might want to take a look at this um, so that we don't have a problem in the near future. Let's say nobody looks at it. We get up to 98% utilization. At this point, we've only got 20 gig available. We're probably finding that Exchange is slowing down a little bit. People will be hitting send and receive and it's taking forever. They'll be opening tickets saying the network is running slow or complaining that their broadband from home is slow. Whatever it is, it's actually irrelevant. The problem we can see looking at this is that we've got a storage issue. Under these circumstances, I would expect the status to be showing as degraded. This is saying to us, there's something that's having an impact on this service right now. It's causing it to not be running at its optimal. And if you don't do something about it soon, there's a high likelihood that this will degenerate into a complete outage. So if we look at the dashboard here, we can see that most things are green. We've actually got a few reds. So that's going beyond the acceptable, at-risk, degraded, and we're going all the way now to down. This is absolute worst case scenario. For the purposes of this demo, I'd like you to imagine that I'm running IT operations for an e-commerce company. So all of our revenues coming through our website 
and what we're seeing right now is that our website is down. So this is costing us money every minute that the website's down. I need to get onto this pretty quick. So without Xenos, I'd be stuck with going through that big list of events there, trying to apply my experience and, and what understanding I do have of the infrastructure to try and pick out the relevant events. With Xenos though, I have the benefit of service impact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click through into this website service. The first thing we're going to see here is the service definition. What we can see if you look at the right hand side of the screen is that this is made of three sub services. So these services have been built by subject matter experts. So I've had my um, infrastructure team have built my infrastructure service. My networking team have built my software defined network service and my web developers have built my website service. Just taking a slight aside from troubleshooting for a moment, let's drill down into this website service so you can see how they're built. So you can see here we've got two entries, two components make up this service. They are the default website and the IIS admin service. My web developers have told me as long as they're running, as they're healthy, then the service will run, the website will run, at least on that server. Now, that might seem like there's a lot missing there. So let's just take a look behind the scenes and see what this is giving us. I like to use the concept of an iceberg. If you think about it, with an iceberg, 10% of the ice is above the waterline, the rest of the ice is beneath the waterline. If you look at what we've got here, it's the same thing. We've defined that little bit that sticks above the water and our software has even drawn in a little waterline for me with these three dots. If I do a show all, we actually start seeing everything that's beneath the waterline. And what this is, is things that have been discovered dynamically and in real time by the Xenos software. So we can see that our IIS admin service could be impacted by a problem with the Windows server. We could see that the Windows server could be impacted by a problem with its hard drives or with its CPU. Interestingly, we could also see that it could be impacted by this Amazon EC2 instance. And if we take this out further, what we can see is it could also be impacted by any of the metadata or any of the components within that AWS account. Now that's interesting because uh, if we were to go and look at the device specification, nowhere in there does it talk about the AWS side of things. This is something that we've discovered dynamically and in real time, as I say. Let's take the example that we're running in US East at the moment, and maybe we notice that most of our traffic is coming from Europe. So we decide to shut down this instance, migrate it to EU Frankfurt, and bring the box back up again. What would happen is at the moment that we see that this Windows box is running again, we would dynamically refresh all of this metadata from Amazon to represent where it's actually running now. And that saves you a huge amount of effort in terms of maintaining the services. And it means that you can rely on that data. You can trust that the data that you're seeing is accurate. So let's take a look at this in the context of that main service, that original service that was having the outage. If we look at this here, we can see that it's a complex service. This little portion over here on the left um, was that AWS service that we just looked at. And somewhere in there, there is an issue which is causing my website to be down. Now, we absolutely give you the tools to work through it at on this diagram if we really want to. But there's an easier way, and that is to go to the impact events and say, tell me, why do you think we're down? This is going to show us the three events which could potentially be leading to the outage. But it's also run this through our patented root cause analysis algorithm and has given a confidence score for each one. The highest of which is this power off. Now, power off seems a little strange to me in a data center, so I'm going to click through and find out more information. 
So here we are at the actual component which is having the, um, the problem. We can see there definitely was a power off event, but we can also see immediately preceding that, we had a hardware fault, a memory fault. So a memory failure here, one of the DRAMs has caused this blade to go down. We can see which blade it is. We can see that it's in this Cisco UCS system. It's in chassis number four, it's in slot number eight. It's a B200 M3 blade with the service profile called ESX48 SAN assigned to it. So we've gone from knowing virtually nothing other than our website is down to knowing not only the precise issue that has brought it down, but also having a number of different means of being able to recover this. Now, all of this has been made possible by the power of our Zen packs. So we are an agentless solution and our Zen packs determine how we communicate with the device. So are we talking about SNMP? Are we talking about SSH, uh, WinRM, APIs, whatever it is, we determine how are we going to get the communication to be able to gather that data from the device. The next thing that we do uh, is as soon as we add a device to a database, we build a proxy model of that device. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take, for example, this Cisco UCS system. We've added this and we've said, there's all kinds of ways that a UCS system can be configured. So tell me, do you have any chassis, for example? And it says, yes, I have two chassis. And we say, great, within this chassis, do you have any backplane ports? Do you have any blade servers? Do you have any fan modules? And we start building up this really complex relationship of all of the interdependencies within the actual model. And then as things start running, we see what are we communicating with that could also potentially impact this device. And it's this knowledge, this deep interrogation that we perform on the systems that enable us to um, actually manage the services in the way that we do. I'm John Landells for Xenos. I hope this has been useful for you and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.